Alright, so estrogen and androgen function. We've already touched upon some of their functions already, but I think this is so important and that because these hormones basically run this whole reproductive system that I'm going to make a whole video on them. And we're going to touch upon them even more later because, again, they're involved in everything from physiology to, to pathology. So first of all, we'll start with estrogen. And that's estrogen in the females we're going to look at. And estrogen... Um, Estrogen and androgens actually are growth factors. That's a key thing to remember, actually. These are growth factors, okay? They induce growth of things. So estrogen, what, is it, what does it induce growth of? First of all, do you remember um, what it does to, to the genitalia? It induces growth of the external genitalia. And that happens in utero. External genitalia. All right. It also induces growth of the breasts, and that's what that happens in puberty. So if if there's breasts, you know it's because estrogen is happening. And this can be in males as well. Thirdly, estrogen induces growth of the bones. It activates those osteoblasts to build up your bones. And finally, it builds it builds up the coagulation factors. Um, and this kind of makes sense. If you think about it, the reason for this is, is for pregnancy. If you watch any movie, you know that the woman who dies during pregnancy, she bleeds out. So um, evolutionarily, we have developed this estrogen to induce these increased coagulation factors to prevent that from happening. All right. So we've talked about estrogen. Now we're going to switch over. We're going to go talk about androgens. And androgens are referring to testosterone and, and DHT. Remember DHT, what is it? It's just basically super powerful testosterone. And how do you get DHT? Remember, it's from the 5-alpha reductase. Okay. And we're going to talk about their functions early in life. Early. This is like in utero. And we're going to talk about it later. That's um, puberty onward. Okay. So what does testosterone do in utero? We just talked about this. It induces growth of the internal genitalia from what? From the Wolfian ducts. And then what does is, what is, uh, DHT do? DHT does the external genitalia. Okay. Now let's switch over to puberty. What happens? Well, testosterone basically runs puberty. You have puberty in males because you have testosterone, okay? And you, all you have to do is remember what happened to yourself. Um, mainly, uh, especially for guys, it's a little easier. But all those changes in puberty, that's all due to testosterone. So you get growth. Again, remember, estrogen and androgens are growth factors. So it's super easy. Induces growth of the penis. Growth of penis. Growth um, of the muscles. You get increased height, you get, um, and you get deepening voice. So all that, all those things, just remember, you don't have to memorize any of this, just think about what happened to yourself. And what happens in DHT? Well, DHT later in life is, is unfortunately unwanted, it has a lot of unwanted effects. DHT will increase prostate growth, again, there's the growth, and it causes balding. So this is the one thing that doesn't grow. causes you to lose hair rather than grow hair, unfortunately. Um, and now we're going to talk about one last thing, which is relevant. It's we're going to talk about the effects of exogenous testosterone. Whoops. Sorry, I'm making you all dizzy here. Test. And I postulate to you that if you know this hypothalamic pituitary axis well enough, if you know it by heart, down cold... You will know exactly what will happen with exogenous testosterone. Okay, so now we have the testicle. Okay, with um, so now we have these blood vessels going to the hypothalamus and to the um, pitu anterior pituitary. Okay, and when you're taking this exogenous testosterone, because you want to get buff, obviously, uh, it's going to go into your blood. Okay, it's going to go to the bladder vessels and it's going to hit the hypothalamus 
and remember we'll remember the basic function of testosterone this basic principle of the um the hypothalamic pituitary axis is feedback inhibition it's going to come back it's going to inhibit gnrh and it's also going to inhibit the anterior pituitary and specifically lh and fsh so as a result because you have so markedly decreased lh and fsh these go down your testicle is um, um, is very hypostimulated, and what that means is that you're going to get decreased testosterone production from the testicle. Okay. And what was the point of all that testosterone to, um, production in the testicle? Well, obviously, it's for um, you need it for the rest of your body, but specifically, you need it for sperm production. Okay. So if you have decreased intratesticular testosterone, remember you have a lot of exogenous testosterone in your blood, but there is decreased intratesticular testosterone. Um, remember that 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 blood that testosterone in the blood can't get to the sperm because of that that um, blood testes barrier. So your sperm production is going to go way down. Okay, and you that is basically azoospermia, which is very low levels of sperm. All right, so that's it for our androgen and estrogen functions. All right, the other thing I wanted to note, let me clear this board first. Excuse me. Sorry about that. So the other thing I wanted to note is that I've been talking about estrogen in females and androgens in males, but I want you to understand that males can have estrogen as well. Males also have fat cells. And these fat cells have aromatase. So you can get the aromatase in fat cells taking the, remember what it does, it takes androgens and turns it into estrogens. So you can get uh, estrogens in females as well. And estrogen has the, same, has the same function in males and females. It doesn't change anything. So remember that the estrogen, first of all, if you have enough estrogen, you can get development of the um you can get development of breasts and does other things coagulation factors um and remember i told you about bones it does the same thing in males and females okay and the same thing for females they can have androgens they, they already do have androgens you already know that um they already know that the latex cells are producing androgens but normally, those androgens we turn them into, uh, we turn them into estrogen. But if you don't, if for some reason you're not making that estrogen, you get built up too much androgens, you're gonna have the same thing. You're gonna have virilization, which is what it's called. And that's basically, if you imagine a girl going through the same puberty that a boy does, and getting that hair growth and deepening of the voice, that's virilization. So that's it. That's something, a little thing I wanted to add to make things clearer.